Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Moe Aki, Swedish Whiskey Girl. Today we're here with a whiskey that I've been longing to try for quite a long time, ever since I heard that it was coming out. So thanks Kev for letting us borrow your bottle so I could do a review. This is Glenmorangie Detail of Cake. It's bottled at 46% EBV and it's a whiskey that's been matured initially in ex-bourbon casks and finished in Hungarian Tokai casks. Don't know if that's exactly how it's pronounced, but Tokai is a sweet wine which has been made using noble rot grapes. So basically what you do to the grapes is you give them this sort of fungus, a noble rot, which makes the grapes shrivel up and they concentrate their sweetness, almost like a raisin when it dries. It also concentrates the sugars in it. And that means that when you do the wine, you also, or when you make the wine, you get a sweeter style of wine. It's a little bit like Sauternes that a lot of people might have heard of, but yeah, so it's, it's a lovely dessert wine. I really like it if it's served cold with dessert, and this whiskey is inspired by Dr. Bill, who's the master blender. He was inspired by how a lot of joyous moments in life are in kind of when you're having cake and he was thinking about when he was baking with his gran and also the upside pineapple what was it called pineapple upside down cake that his daughter made him for his birthday so they made this whiskey and the Tokai casks are meant to give this kind of cake-esque flavor to it and they've also partnered with Dominic Ansel who's a pastry chef uh, from New York, I believe. He's often called the Willy Wonka of New York and they've made some whiskey and cake pairings Which I just find sounds delicious and I think the kind of Perfect pairing is the kind of pineapple cake with this whiskey. So I'm excited to try it Let's start by having a look on the nose hmm. Is this initially it's a um, A maltiness like a soft maltiness that meets almost like pineapple pear it's a sweet fruitiness i think it's a little bit cold because it's a little bit tricky to pick out aromas but i do think it has this um malty note that i recognize from orangey 10. I also have the original here, so we're gonna try that and compare them as well. Let's see if a little bit of warmth does something. I said it before that this flat is just so cold. Yeah, a little bit more now, but it's still quite a gentle nose, I would say. It, it doesn't, it's not a punch in the face or something that's nice, overwhelming. But that maltiness makes me think of almost like a sponge cake because it has a like a van, almost like a vanilla sweetness but with the maltiness and they're very entwined in each other which is why I'm thinking of that sponge cake but I mean it's called a tailor cake so it might be a little bit of a trick in my brain as well. Primarily pear but it, there's something to the pear makes it a little bit different and I wonder if it's this kind of almost tart note you can get from pineapple um, that is making the character different which is why I don't want to say just pear yeah but quite gentle on the nose so let's have a little taste Slangeva A lot more flavour on the palate. Fairly sweet, which you would anticipate. It also has that malty nose that um, is very much glamourangy for me. And uh, yeah, there's a fruitiness, but it's strange. It's because the maltiness is the kind of heart of it. And then it has, I think it's a pear pineapple, because it's almost like when you've been eating pineapple and you know how pineapple has enzymes that almost starts breaking down 
you so it's like the pineapple is eating you and you can get this kind of feeling after eating pineapple that's a little bit rough in your mouth but you still have that kind of sweetness meets bitterness almost because that's the kind of feel it in leaves in your mouth and that's what this makes me think of but then it also has another juicier fruitiness that makes me think of green fruits which is why i'm thinking pears and pineapple hmm I'm also trying to identify because this maltiness is very a beige maltiness. It's very soft. It also has a touch of kind of a drying sensation to it. A little bit like toast. But then that sweetness there, I would say it's a fruit sweetness. So like a fructose sweetness. Not like a sh white sugar or a brown sugar or anything like that. I mean, I can definitely see why it's going well with the pineapple cake. It is a bit like that kind of sponge cake vibe because hmm, the maltiness meets these other flavors that just almost makes you think of a French patisserie or when you bite into something that has these different textures. So you have the, the fruitiness and you also have a tiny bit of that wood spice coming through as well. And a bit of vanilla. Hmm. I'm just gonna go get a glass because I realise I don't have one in front of me and then we're gonna try it next to the original. <laughs> Love that noise. Let's have a little look on the nose on both of them. The original has a little bit more of that kind of fresh, I don't know how to, it's like a fruity vanilla. So like vanilla pears on the nose for me is the original, but the tail of cake is denser. Like a candied orange denseness, I would say, when you're comparing them. And of course, there's a slight difference. So this is it's at 46%, the tail cake, and the original is at 40 And it's uh, bourbon casks. Yeah, the, the original feels much fresher. It, Yeah, just kind of fresh, quite fruity, a little bit sweet, but that's a bit of a vanilla. And then the tail of the cake's much denser, almost like more orangey, like candied oranges and a bit more almost Christmassy. But more orange. So let's have a sip on the original and we'll see. This one's so funny. It always changes and today the Morangi 10 is more fruity. A little bit of that maltiness on the finish. But last time I had it, it was primarily malty and it always like, kind of changes. Today is primarily fruity and it's like a light fruitiness. It's a bit of an influence of kind of pears and a, a little bit of that kind of fresh apple note as well. Which is also what I got on the nose. <laughs> and now I'm a little bit annoyed because I wanted to find that maltiness because that's what I found last time. But I would say it's there underneath, on, more on the finish. But, but yeah, very fresh, easy to like. I definitely see why a lot of people have that as their favourite. And then the table cake. Also, I'm denser on the palate. The tail cake almost feels a little bit drier than the 10, which is might be why I don't experience the, the 10 as malty today. Because comparatively, I would say this one feels much more malty and 
more wood spice, more of that drying, maltiness meets wood, dry sensation, but with a denser note, which I also think those drying notes can give. But a little bit more orangey, more pineapple now, and the pear's almost gone. It's still there on the nose. And now I don't experience this as that sweet. Definitely an interesting one to kind of sit with. It just changes a little bit. It felt sweeter when I tried it initially. Maybe because I was anticipating sweetness because of the casks. Hmm. An interesting one. Let's have another sip of the original and just see. I just love these kind of comparisons. That's... I think that's a very clear way if you have the can't speak again. If you have the chance to try whiskies that are maybe a little bit similar or in your head that you're like, oh, they should be similar, or these ones that we're I could imagine the Taylor cake is basically the maturation you have for the 10, the original, and then plus the finishing in the casks. Because it's an interesting way just to see how much they can ch change. And there's of course no uh, age statement on the Taylor cake. It's one of the limited releases that they do annually. And I think it sits at around £75 if it's still out there. But yeah, the original is just easy liking. It's um, one of those that fruity and fresh. And then on the finish you get a little bit more of the malty nose. Note, not nose. Tail cakes then serves a little bit more woody, a little bit more dry and malty, I would say. But underneath you have that kind of fruitiness coming out. But I think the dominant thing for me is the malty woodiness with a touch of the, the fruits and a little bit of the sweetness. It would be so interesting to try a tail cake next to a Takai wine. I mean, if you've done it already, please let me know your thoughts. Do you like Glamour de Tele Cake? Have you tried it yet? Have you tried any of the other limited releases? What, which one was your favourite? Or perhaps is the Glamour de Original that appeals to you? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please put them in the comment section here below. And I'm actually doing a little experiment with these kind of sweeter wines myself. I've used a South African wine that is very similar to Sauternes, that I've used to infuse some whiskey sniffers, so little wood chips. And then after infusing them, I am now maturing whiskey in them. So it's like almost like a finishing time, you could say. Uh, it's just a little fun experiment, but if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, if you don't want to miss it. But of course, I hope you've liked this video. And if you do like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I'd be absolutely over the moon if you considered using my affiliate links the next time you're shopping with either Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange, or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. All that information and the links to my other social channels are in the description here below. And as always, a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. I'm so grateful I have you guys. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slanjava, skoala.